Thank you, sir. And who is this good-looking woman? I introduce my wife. This is Jane Sharp, sir. I'm pleased to meet you, ma'am. May I say you are as beautiful as your husband is brave. Bravery is a subject on which I hear you speak with some authority, Colonel Brand. Well, my fame follows me like a bucket tied to a dog's tail, my lady. Makes a great deal of noise, but is damned inconvenient. Oh, I bon mot. I must make a note of that. This is Mr. Clarence Shellington, sir. He works for the London Gazette. He wants to write about you, sir. Your servant, Shellington. May I make an appointment to speak to you on behalf of my readers, sir? Why not do it over dinner? May I invite you two gentlemen to dine tonight? What do you say, Colonel Brand? I accept, madam. But I warn you, I'm a simple soldier. No fancy dishes. All I require is a good claret. <laughs> and you, Mr. Shellington? Bread and water and your company, madam, would suffice. By the way, Sharp, where can my men find water well away from camp? Well, you'll find fresh water and good shelter behind those trees, sir. Good. Thank you. Damn it, Jane, they're dining with us tonight. Who's going to organise the cooking? We're going to have to find somebody who knows all about bloody frog dishes. Which fork was which knife? Of course we shall. What's going on? If I find any of you near this gypsy girl again, I'll confine you to camp for a year. Now clear off! A lot of you. Harris! As you were, Harris. Now, I'm having some guests for dinner tonight. How would you like to be chef? Eh? Serve at table, talk frog, a little la da not very much, sir. But if you give me Conchita's apple... That's how it started in the Garden of Eden, Harris. Buenos dias, senorita. Senora, not senorita. And I have a child. But it's not mine. Ramona! See you again, Senorita. So who's that ugly buzzard? How should I know? Never saw him before. You never saw him before? Well, by God, you've been doing some winking and twinkling for a married woman. Married woman, me. <laughs> no, for two months, I have no ups, no downs. Bring it up. We are here. Sixty miles north, this river marks the boundaries of our forces. Thirty miles north of the river is the Rocha Fort and Powder Magazine, housing General Calvert's supplies. Fifty miles to the east is General Calvert's main camp. Now, our task is simple, to move north, capture the fort, blow the powder magazine, and make it back to camp before Calvert's men can intercept us over the mountains. Congratulations, Brand. It's ambitious and it's rather impressive. There is one thing, sir. It seems a pity to blow the fort without making a full inventory. You mean for intelligence purposes? Perhaps I didn't make myself clear. General Calvé is rumoured to have gathered his stores as well as his ammunition at the fort. An inventory would give us an accurate picture of Napoleon's intentions in the whole area. Perhaps I should go on the mission, sir. Sniff around the fort, make a full survey of the stores, put it all together, would give us a glimpse into Calvé's mind. I would be risking my head of intelligence on nothing more than a rumour that the Rocha Fort is the centre of General Calvé's storage system. Yes, sir, I think it might well be a risk worth taking, eh, Brand? I can assure you, my lord, my information is never wrong. Very well. Colonel Brand and his men will set out at dawn the day after tomorrow. They will scout one day ahead of the main body of infantry to be commanded by Major Sharp. Sharp will also be responsible for the security of a small party of sappers and engineers to be commanded by Major Pycroft. Will that be all, sir? I've had a long journey and should like to make myself presentable enough to dine with Major Sharp and his wife tonight. I'm obliged to you for the information, Brand. Dismissed.
Colonel Brand seems to think very highly of you, Sharp. Seems so, sir. Well, don't let it go to your head. One minute you're showing poets round the camp, the next you're throwing dinner parties for distinguished senior officers. You're cutting quite a figure in society, Sharp. Thank you, sir. Major Pycroft to see you, sir. I respectfully request not to be assigned to this mission as explosives, officer, sir. Request denied, Major Pycroft. A man under duress may not do his best work, sir. Let me make something clear to you, Pycroft. You have two choices. Either you blow up the Rocker powder magazine, or I'll return you to the regular army list and find an excuse to send you back to London. See how you like it walking around in your leather hood with children pointing at you in the street. <clears throat> Well? I'll blow the magazine, sir. Dismissed. Sir. What do you think, Ross? Colonel Brand has offered us an interesting opportunity. Can we exploit it? Too early to say. I'll only find out by going on the mission. By then it may be too late, Ross. Too late for you. <laughs> That's what you pay me for, sir. May I compliment you on an excellent meal, my lady? Tasted all the sweeter since we've spent the last six weeks foraging for food behind enemy lines. How wonderful to live like a gypsy. And what a good idea for a portrait. Would you sit for me, dear lady? Some rings, a scarf. Oh, please say you will. The Romanies are so romantic. I'm sorry to hear you say that, Shellington. I myself hold no regard for the culture of the gypsy race. Nor I. I merely meant that they were a good source of poetic inspiration. I shall be glad to get myself up if you wish to paint my portrait. I'm sure Mr. Shellington's admiration of the Romany race is purely artistic. Absolutely. Absolutely, my dear lady, how aptly put. Surely you don't see gypsies as a suitable subject for poetry, Shellington? The sublime is my only subject, Colonel Brand. I'm glad to hear it. Soldiers should confine themselves to shooting. Poets should confine themselves to the sublime. Pray, what do you think is the proper subject for painters? I think painters should confine themselves to nature. Sunsets and such like. You are a student of nature, sir? Absolutely. Do you know why? Because I am a soldier. What's the first thing you notice about nature, Shillington? You notice that the strong animals survive and the weak fall away. That's how the world is. The strong survive and the weak die. That's how it should be. That way you breed a strong race. Survival of the strongest is the principle upon which I conduct my troop. I work my men hard. Those that can keep up, I promote. Those that can't, I have no use for. What about the wounded, sir? Wounded? In battle, sir, some men are killed, some survive, and some men are wounded. The wounded are always the greatest burden. What do you do about them? We leave them, Sharp. This is war. War is no place for the weak. It's a big change. 